members of the victorious Team Solo Mid. Thanks, Riv. We want to welcome Wild Turtle and Bjergsen to the analyst desk just to talk to you guys a little bit. Now, you're continuing a great streak that you have against the lower-ranked teams, but this game seemed to stall out for a little bit. So, Wild Turtle, I just want to ask you, why is it that this game over the other ones kind of seemed to last longer? Uh, I think it's because, like, we're trying to, like, practice new comps, I guess, and then we're not really adjusted to it yet. So we're trying it out, and it's it's been working out pretty well, but, like, this game we were kind of shaky, and we didn't know what we needed to do, kind of. So why was it this game that you decided to practice new things, I guess, in preparation for playoffs, maybe, uh, to say, okay, well, you know, it's complexity, we'll, we'll just try something new? Um, we, it wasn't exactly just against complexity. We ran a very similar comp in the game against LMQ. But um, it's it's just Zareth being a really strong pick right now. He's just really good at sieging and constantly poking out. And we feel like we could make something happen with that. Um, also has really good stall, like Ziggs, wave click constantly. So we felt like it was a comp we could pull off. And uh, it's, it's a lot more coordinated and we have, I don't know, it's the flow is a lot better in scrims and we haven't really been able to translate it into the LCS, I feel. And that's why the game stalled so long. So if you're willing to share, how much practice does go into you saying, guys, I wanna, I wanna try Zareth next week. Like, how many games is that? How you know, was that two weeks in advance? Like when was that sort of decided? Um, it's just I try out champions in solo queue and then when I reach a certain comfort level, or that's what everyone does, then we decide we try it out in scrims. And then we try it out in scrims, everyone gives their opinion on whether they feel like it's a good pick. And if we feel like it's a good pick, we build a comp around it or we fit it into a comp that we already have. Cool. All right, now Bjergsen, as the shot caller of the team, I want to talk about the middle of the game where you guys were having some of those stall out issues. As the shot caller, what are the th specific things you're looking for that will allow you guys to kind of open up the map and open up the game and move forward? You just need to make sure that everyone's on the same page. That's what's really hard to make sure that Turtle doesn't want to get his red buff. I don't want to get my blue buff. Someone doesn't want to get some farm in a side lane or we're tunneling too hard on either getting a pick or getting the vision. It's just having the perfect balance and everyone on the same page and not tunneling on different things. So that's, that's really hard, and that's what a shot caller's main job is, in my opinion. And you guys did finally get yourselves um, in on the fight, actually. If you can pull up our, our first and only replay here, it's the mid lane pick that Amazing gets for you guys. Uh, so tell me sort of what the communication is like. Is he saying, I can go for this, and you're saying follow up? What are you, what are you doing here, Bjergsen? Um, it's mainly just when Amazing sees this opportunity, he just calls, uh, I'm a god, I'm going to go in. <laughs> and uh, he, he just goes in. He, Probably does a good flash, but when we have these, the K Zareth comp that just has massive range on the ultimates, you can just keep getting those, uh, like, even when it's far out of range, you can still get it. Uh, <laughs> randomly, I see Dyer's being at 1 HP, and he's like, oh, help me, guys. And we're like, oh, well, we'll come help you. And uh, we managed to pick up a kill there. Uh, luckily, Robert did not manage to finish off Dyer's, so we're still all alive. And Amazing just showing really good mechanics on Lee Sin. As always. Yeah, that went really well. Uh, Turtle, I actually have to ask you. So you're playing Caitlyn this game. You're an AD carry. Um, typically, AD carries don't get to like make a lot of big plays. You're just kind of there with the team. So what do you do when you're like, well, I'm waiting for my team to do something. And at some point, there's going to be a fight. Like, wh what do you do with your time, basically? Uh, so basically, right now, I don't have any time to like go to side lane and just farm. So I have to like group mid and be like, OK, if they go on us, I'm here to auto attack something. So that's how I am right now. I don't really go off and just get a lot of farm and then come back pretty big. I'm trying to like play more with the team and like get objectives. Well, one thing that I saw that game though was uh, your sort of counterpart, Robert X Lee, was running around on Tristana. He had like an 80 minion lead on you at this like 30 minute mark or so, where he's he's the guy running to the sidelines, getting all this farm, getting giant and, and fed. Is that something you bring up to your team, saying, "Guys, Tris is going to outscale me"? Uh, I used to bring it up, but like it's kind of pointless because it doesn't really help our team environment. Like if I say, "Yeah, Tris is like a lot stronger than me right now. I can't really do anything." That's like not something you want to say. Okay. So I'm like trying to keep positive and be like, I'm still pretty strong. I'm not that weak yet. And then we just try to like win from there. Okay. I want to talk about the Kate pick a little bit. I do realize that it fits into the poke comp that you had created. But I want to ask, because of the way that we're seeing the mid lane champion pool develop, are we going to be seeing a lot more Kate across all the AD carries? Or what, what's going on there? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's just like my one of my kind of comfort picks. I wouldn't really pick it normally, but like I was pretty comfortable with it. So I just picked it there. I don't know if you'll see more Caitlyn in the future. OK, well, maybe we will. I guess we'll see what happens. Of course, that was your, your first champion, the pentakill there, um, which actually brings me to an interesting point, because we had the, uh, the video interview with you come out before this game. And you said you wanted to get a pentakill on Mars. Uh, do you have hopes that the Season 5 World Championship will be held on another um, planet? That I couldn't come up with the word. You hoping you know, Season 5 World Championship on Mars? Yeah, for sure, man. I really want to get that pentakill on Mars. It's <laughs> That's like where you're going. It's, it's my dream. It's my goal. And dream. Which which champion would you want to do it on? I'd probably want to get it on like 
Probably like astronaut Timo. Like maybe Quinn. On Quinn. Quinn. Yeah, I, I, like, I like little birdies. <laughs> We're gonna <a> respectable choice. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't do space flight, you know, with them. You do have to do still take a rocket ship. Oh, that's true. That's true. Um, so actually, one extra question for you guys then re regarding the fact that uh, we're talking about worlds a little bit, maybe. Um, you guys are kind of in one of the I guess, lowest spots you've been heading into the playoffs, right? Like, you've, you've come in as top three seed for every end of the split. You guys gotten top two at the end of playoffs every single split. And to my knowledge, TSM is the only team to have gone to Worlds all three times, unless I'm forgetting one here. And this is the first time where North America seems so strong you guys might miss that opportunity. Is that pressure um, kind of bearing down on you any? Um, for me, not really personally. Uh, there's still a month to playoffs, so we still feel like that if we just keep practicing and keep practicing hard, we'll we'll keep improving. We have a really hard scrim set. We scrim eight hours a day uh, and have mandatory solo queue practice as well. So I think every one of us just feel confident enough that we just need to keep improving and we just need to be able to translate our play from back home to here. Okay. All right. Well, best of luck in the rest of the games this season. Hopefully you go into the playoffs looking strong, making that push for Worlds. We've got to take a quick break, but keep tweeting those answers for our question of the day because we'll be reading our favorites when we come back. Then it's back into the action for our third bout, LMQ versus CLG. Stay tuned.